Okay, so you guys can see my screen, right? I don't have it. Maybe I yes, can. Fresh. Yes, but let me. Okay, so first thing first, right? Uh, jobs and internships. I think it's a very important uh, for us uh, to have an internship before you go to your uh, final corporate life, right? Some of you might already have some experience, background from your uh, time uh, in India or wherever you are from, right? Uh, you guys have worked maybe for a year or two and some of you might be a fresher, right? So it's it's very important to have something in US where you it gets your chance for a full-time uh, amplified, right? So in our batch, most of us, uh, we were doing an internship, right? We were like seven or eight people in our batch and I think now every one of us is blessed. So one of the uh, one of the thing I see is everyone had some background in India, right? Uh, and wherever they were from, and then they had an uh, at least three or four months of internship uh, while they were here. So I, what I would suggest is now is a good time, right? So all of you have already completed two semester at OSU, so you are now eligible to do an internship, right? So from summer you will be uh, you will be eligible to go for an internship. And uh, I think now is a very right time because for interview, searching and everything, it would at least take like two to three months. Uh, so start uh, building up your resume. I think start sharpening your resume, which is a very first thing for, uh, you know, internship or job or everything, right? So my suggestion would be uh, resume is a very important because it's the first uh, thing that recruiter will judge you through, right? If your resume does not seem uh, matching to the profile or job profile they are looking for, I think they, they will not even consider you for the next steps ahead. So it's very important to give a time on your resume. And some of the key things that I feel is highlight the work that you have been doing, right? So not necessarily that it is your experience in the past. Suppose you are doing some good project during your time at OSU, right? I think... Uh, warehousing was a subject where you kind of build a, a, a plan for the way so you can show the projects like okay i have uh, worked on this project and this project i have done this 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 thing uh try to quantify it right uh so basically uh, binas i know he's working in industrial assessment center right so he can quantify like okay i'm working in the industrial assessment center as a student lead where i'm leading a uh, team of five undergrads and three grad. This shows your leadership skills, right? You can say like, okay, I have visited five or six industries where I have helped them save uh, X amount of dollar money. This shows that your impact you have provided, right? Uh, and then uh, the collaboration, right? So I'm working with a team of five people uh, where we are building this project. It shows that you have a collaboration skills. So those are some of the skills that I feel uh recruiters are looking for people like us who are early started to our career right they would not expect you to be okay you are expert in molding or you're expert in casting or you are you know expert in something the things that they would be looking mostly is how is your learning capability right are you able to learn new things when you are into the industry right can you gain it fast so you can show it by uh your resume like okay you have worked on this this, this project you have participated in uh, this conferences you have presented this paper you know you, uh, you have co-authored or authored this paper even if you don't have a previous experience if you have a past experience it's very good right you can you can show it uh, in your resume like in my past experience uh, suppose you work as a gsm or anything i've helped to save uh, x amount of dollars i have helped to uh, reduce the cycle time for a process by this many seconds, I have helped to, you know, uh, you understand, right? You have to quantify those things. And then if you don't have, so the leadership skills, so that you are uh, good to, you know, learn and come up to the new, so that you are a collaborative and a team player by saying you work in a team, build a project, you know, and then that that's how I think your resume uh, comes up in the first. The other thing is don't try to make it like a, you know, history a book. Try to make it very brief. I would suggest make it within a page because if I am a recruiter, I am getting like thousands of resume or hundreds of resume, right? And I don't want to go through pages and pages, right? So try to make it crisp and uh, summarize the things that you have been doing. And if you see it's going beyond a page, try to prioritize the project which you want to show it to the recruiters rather than, you know, 
uh, oh, I was a volleyball captain during my school. I don't have anything to do with that, right? So try to make it crisp uh, and uh, make it within a pace uh, and try to highlight the major experience and skill sets that you have which would fit for that job. Any questions guys have? Okay. So that's the first thing, right? I think uh, it's the first impression that gives to a recruiter. Yeah, Jimmy, yeah, you have a question? Yeah, yeah. I just I just remembered a question. So what's your view about the objective, you know, having the objective section in your resume? Would it be, would you suggest that? So for me, I, I, I don't uh, use an objective things. Uh, maybe it might help for someone and it might not, right? If from my point of view, uh, I, I don't know uh, how impactful that would make, right? Because, uh, you know, the objective is basically like if I'm a recruiter, I'm not looking for what your objective is. I'm looking for what your skill set is, what your experience is, right? I can write objective like, oh, I want to be, uh, but you can, you can add it to it. I mean, some of them use it uh, in their template. It's like uh, up to you, but for me, I haven't used objective and I think it has been working till now. So my most priority would be showing up my skill sets, my job experience and what I have to give it to the company. So if your objective is taking some space for your some of the experience, I think you can remove that. Okay. The second thing I think that is uh, most of us has is where do we find an internships or job, right? And situation or time right now is very different, right? The tech industry is in very different uh, phase. I think not only tech, every industry is in a hiring freeze, uh, either there's a layoffs happening. So, you know, it's chaos everywhere. But for you guys, I think for uh, internships, I think there's a lot of openings, right? Because full times and internships are two different things. For internships, first thing is you guys won't need any visa sponsorship. So that's an advantage for us, right? You can work with your uh, uh, CPT. So whenever you are applying for the positions, make sure that you, do, you don't need to select that you need any sponsorship. You can select no for the sponsorship. And that would create like more chances for you guys for, for getting an internships. Uh, for full time, yes, I think there is a requirement for a sponsorship in future, right? And uh, <clears throat> a lot of companies are now in hiring freeze and other things, but there are still companies which are hiring. So uh, don't get demotivated with all those news and things. I think our uh, for from our side, give your effort and put your hundred percent on you know uh, applying to jobs, making your resume sharp, and preparing for interviews. You never know, like you get a call some tomorrow, say like, hey, are you free for an interview? And you should be prepared and ready. So my manager, my mentor always say, don't worry for the things that is not in your control and make sure that, that you are ready for the things in your control. So I think that's what uh, I also work every day on, right? So I would suggest as work on your skill sets, work on your resume, keep applying and looking for jobs, making the connections to people through LinkedIn. I think LinkedIn is a very good platform for us now. Uh, and make like having said that, making connections is not like you have thousands of connections, right? Make connections which uh, might help help you, right? Like check the recruiters uh, who are hiring, uh, check the alumni from OSU who are in some good positions and maybe from your past college and universities, alumni, right? Because there's a lot of diaspora of people uh, in US, right? From across the world. So I would say whenever you are making the connections, uh, look for the people from OSU, from your past alumni, your friend circle, mutual connections, uh, recruiters, those, those are hiring. And like the people have people put right open to hire or hiring. So reach out to them and then make sure you have a kiss message, not a, like, a, you know, I get a lot of uh, messages in LinkedIn like, oh, I'm from this, I have this background. Maybe uh, first first view, uh, everyone do not want to, you know, go through everything. So make it a catchy kind of a message. Like if someone is from OSU, right, try to approach them. So when I was approaching recruiters during my time, 
there was a recruiter in Rivian who was an OSC alumni. So I reached out to him uh, saying something, hope you are doing good, go Pokes, right? And he suddenly read that and like he reached out to me. So try to maybe be creative because like there is the hundred of people reaching out to them, right? And they won't be reading all the messages. So sometimes it might help if you have some connections through your uh, alumnus, uh, that helps. And regarding the jobs that you are applying, again, people will say, oh, I have applied for like 100 jobs. I'm not getting a call. So just be sure what kind of jobs you are applying for, right? Even it, if it is your background matching to the job description, if, if it is related to your uh, profile, if it is relevant to your course of studies, right? It may make sense only if it is somewhat similar to your profile and background rather than you apply for hundreds and thousands of jobs and you are frustrated and you're like, oh, I'm not getting a call. And so, for example, my background was procurement, right? I have, I have, I have three years of experience in supply chain procurement. And I was looking and applying for jobs only in the supply chain and procurement field. And even in that, I was uh, more focused on automotive side because I was working on automotive, right? So my first priority was automotive. And then also I was looking to uh, pivot to a different industry. I was looking for a consumer electronics experience. So in consumer electronics, I applied for those positions, which would match my profile rather than some of them say like 10 years of experience required or five years or eight years, right? So try to make sure that your resume and your background uh, matches the profile that you have right uh, and then uh, rather than applying for a 100x job apply to the jobs which make sense to you because even in supply chain there's multiple things right so if you see different roles there's procurement there is material planning demand planning supply chain analyst industrial supplier industrialization engineer and then multiple things so for example, even if you get a call for a material planning with your background and in supplier industrialization, you might not uh, nail that interview, right? Or even if you start that, <clears throat> you, you, you get an entry-level material planning job. It might not interest you. And then maybe a month or two, you're like, oh, this is not what I want to do. So I would say, look at a long-term perspective, right? Because I know some of my friends who started as a supply chain analyst, and then like in a month or two, this shifted to like, oh, I'm not liking this job. This is not what I was looking for. Uh, because supply chain analyst is a very vast uh, thing. There can be a lot of things into that. So make sure the jobs you are applying is to your profile, to your interest, and what you want to build your career in. Uh, look into the long term. Uh, yes, sometimes it can be impatient for us considering our visa status and everything. But... <clears throat> Do not rush into, uh, you know, uh, applying for 100x jobs and interviewing for every kind of positions. Any, any questions you guys have? Okay. So that's something about what uh, kinds of jobs and how to apply for and uh, your resume, right? The other thing is not only LinkedIn. I think LinkedIn, LinkedIn also has a lot of, you know, old uh, posts. Sometimes the recruiters do not remove it. So sometimes make sure, like, go to the career page of that, uh, like, company. So, for example, say, if you are looking for Tesla, go to the Tesla career page. I yesterday saw there, like, a lot of openings have come up for the internships. I think fall internships has opened for Tesla. So go to Tesla website and you can directly apply from there as well. Uh, it does not have to be always LinkedIn. So if you have some companies in your mind and some target positions, uh, you can directly go to their career page and apply to that. Uh, it's same, right? Unless you have some connections through LinkedIn and some uh, recommendations. Uh, so that is another thing uh, you can reach out to people. Okay, so I will uh, quickly talk about some of the interview preps uh, and the questions that you might, uh, you know, face during the interviews. And these are uh, very uh, basic questions. I think we all of us have gone through uh, for the entry level or the mid level jobs that we have, right? So the first thing uh, people would ask you is self introduction, right? Introduce yourself. Most of the time they might not because they already have your resume and they have gone through it and they don't want to, you know, go through that thing again. 
but make sure you have prepared your introduction and you have thorough idea about what you have in your resume, right? Because if your resume does not reflect what you are telling, then that gives a wrong impression. So make sure you are not writing uh, wrong things on your resume, which you might not be able to explain, you know? Uh, so whatever you have in your resume, prepare that and have your introduction ready. Uh, which would be which should also highlight uh, some of your key uh, projects and activities that you have done and why you know you are suited for that role the other things recruiters uh, and uh, the interviewers ask is what are your strengths right so so some of the strengths that uh, help uh, with the job profile for example say if you are looking for a sourcing say i have a good negotiation skills Right. And then you can say highlight like in my past experience, I have helped save this and this money through my negotiation and this. I have a good communication skill. I have a good uh, team. Uh, I'm a good team player. Right. I can work in a team. I, I, I have helped uh, in the past to resolve some conflicts or weakness. Uh, so weakness do not <clears throat> say weakness as a like, a you know, uh, which would uh, make feel like, oh, this uh, guy is not fit for this. So your weakness, for example, we are an international students, right? So what I say sometimes as my weakness is, uh, I uh, maybe say like my communication skills is different, right? So I would say I'm uh, my weakness is uh, on the communication side, having said that uh, I'm not uh, bad at communication, but uh, having moved to a different place and different industry, uh, I have seen that the communication style and the com the way of communication here is different and I'm improving to, you know, uh, I'm working on that uh, to uh, fit into that uh, goal because the way of emails and the different uh, messaging that we send in uh, India versus people here want a very summarized and the crisp, right? Versus it was, they were more detailed oriented and detailed focused when I, so that's what I saw. So it's not a weakness. It's something that you are learning and improving your way, right? But you can say that I'm improving and learning. The other other facts you can say is uh, I, uh, I, I, am, I am more uh, detailed oriented, right? So it is not a weakness, but you, have, you can say like sometimes, you know, while you are multitasking, right? While you are multitasking, then you want to complete one task thoroughly, then move to a different task, right? But some of the tasks do not need that detailed and thorough uh, requirement. So you can say, uh, I'm improving on my uh, working style where uh, wherever I see that the detailed things are required, I will work on that. And wherever, you know, uh, if it just needs a surface level thing, then uh, I try to complete that and move to a different task rather than going through the detail on that. So try to create a like a creative weakness, which shows like uh, that, that is your strength as well as you know uh, kind of a weakness which you are trying to improve uh, the other thing uh, is what role and company you are applying for as i said earlier look into the long term thing right if you want to build your career as a procurement guy or sourcing guy then do not start uh, you know looking into some uh, random job profiles and then going into that you'll again say like oh i want to move into the role and then move into the company if you do if you do not have a previous experience then yes i think it's good to try different uh, roles before you have an idea what suits for you but if you have worked on something in the past uh, and if you enjoyed that role and if you want to make your career and future in that role i think it's better to focus on that from now on itself. Uh, and then why this role and company, if someone asks, it would be easier for you to, you know, kind of uh, answer in a way that, okay, this role, because I have in the past work on this, this, this things. Uh, and uh, this role fits to my previous experience and this company, because uh, if you are applying to automotive and if you have worked in automotive, having worked in automotive, Tesla is a leading company in US, right? Uh, and uh, they have a brilliant people uh, here. So it, so that it shows with your future roadmap, your previous experience, and also company feels that, yes, I think this guy fits for this job role and profile. The other questions people ask is uh, pressure situation, decision making, and working in a team collaboration, right? 
So always have a story for every kind of answer. So suppose you say you are asked like, okay, uh, do you have an experience working in a team, right? Has there been a situation of conflict? Uh, and how did you resolve that conflict? So have a story uh, prepared from your uh, experience in the past. It's not necessarily be your full-time experience, right? So some of you might be doing a TA, RA, or working as a graduate assistant, graduate housing. So you can uh, have those answers also, those stories also in the answer, right? For example, you can say, uh, uh, I'm working as a I'm working as a graduate assistant or a uh, uh, no, no. graduate teaching assistant and also I have my studies so the pressure situation is like my during my exams I had like 100 papers to uh, correct uh, I have I had 100 papers to evaluate for students and I also had an exam coming up so what did you do in that situation if you say that answer also that would make recruiter okay this guy has a tendency to work in a pressure situation uh, he knows what to do uh, and you can say okay when I was uh, doing for working for my uh, exam, I uh, made sure that exam is my first priority. So uh, I approached my professor, I asked him for some more time. I said him that I have an exam tomorrow, I would have to prepare and my professor was okay. So same thing you'll be doing in the job, right? You'll have to prioritize the situation and you can go and tell your manager and your boss that, okay, I have three tasks today. And uh, out of three, the one deadline is coming up. So I'm planning to complete this first. And then this two, I'm planning to do it maybe tomorrow and day after. So that's how you manage things, right? Uh, decision making. Okay, so decision making. How have you done any decision making in the past? So what I would say sometimes is, yes, I have done. Uh, and I would say decision making based on the ROI, return on investment, right? If you have worked in some projects or something, if you want to uh, select a vendor for a pro uh, something, right? So you can say based on the ROI, uh, I calculated and then uh, this is how I made the decision. So you have to show that what led to your decision rather than, uh, you know, uh, just uh, making something. So what did you do in the background and then how that uh, helped to make the decision for you? Uh, the other one is the problem solving. On the problem solving, I think I always use uh, problem action result or the STAR methodology, right? So first, always tell what problem you had and then what action you did and what was the result out of that. So again, in this, it need not have to be you had something from your uh, previous full-time experience itself. You can always say uh, from your part-time jobs, right? Uh, whatever the problem you were having. So what was the problem? What action you did? And what was the result? And how it helped the company or how it helped you to solve that? Uh, the other would be the technical questions, right? Uh, so if you are going for an entry-level jobs, this would be very limited. I think they would uh, not ask you so detailed, like, okay, uh, explain me about casting or molding or, uh, you know, stamping. Maybe if you are looking for a two, three level of experience, then they might go to that, but prepare uh, for that as well. Right. So I can talk about the procurement. When I apply for the procurement, what I get first question is how do you do your costing of a product? Right. Uh, I just wanted to make sure you guys are there and listening. I don't know if everyone's video is off. I just don't want to blabber myself uh, and finish this. So hope it is making sense, right? Yeah, it is. Everyone is there, I guess. Yeah, everyone is just listening. Yeah, okay. we are listening to you, Prayash. Okay, yeah. Just wanted to make sure that, you know, I'm not myself talking and you guys have some questions and... We are listening, Prayash. Okay. Yeah, so I was telling about the procurement, right? So the question that I always get is on the costing. How do you do costing for a product? So let me ask you guys, if you have to uh, do a costing basic, say for a pen or a, a, a cell phone or whatever product uh, object you have at your place, can someone tell me uh, how you approach this question? Um, maybe we can consider the raw material costs and even the labor costs while manufacturing it. So we combine both the costs and ensure, you know, like it uh, meets to the organization standards. And then uh, we'll ask the vendors to bid for us. Uh, no, so I'm whichever... not saying uh, which oh. vendor to select, right? For, okay. My question was, how do you do the costing of a product? If you are okay. a procurement manager, 
the mm. first thing you have to do is you have to build your so you guys know right what the suit cost model or the bottom up cost so mm. how do you build up a bottom up cost model or a suit cost model for a product okay may maybe i can uh, quickly answer and if you guys have any question uh, so yeah sai so you you said right right uh, the raw mm. material cost but mm. it is not the only cost, right? So for mm. example, <clears throat> you have a pen. The first thing that uh, I feel that you guys have to tell to the hiring manager is you have to understand the bomb of the product, the mm. bill of material, right? What the pen has. So pen has a lid inside it. It has a cap, right? It has a rubber maybe uh, to hold. It has an outer cover, right? So mm -hmm. you have to tell him that you have to first identify the bill of material. That's the first thing. Whatever product you have, it should be the bill of material. I, because maybe most of the things are single component, but there are a lot of things which are made of multiple components. Right. So you have to identify what all is there in that product. Yeah. So once you identify the bill of material, then you have to do the costing for each of the components. And then you start with the raw material cost. Okay. So for example, say uh, outer cover. So the raw material cost and then the process cost. So you have to tell that what process uh, it might have. For example, if it is the outer cover, it's the injection molding, right? You, you don't need to have that all knowledge. I mean, I'm just saying you have to show to the hiring manager that you understand the process and then the learnings always comes in. So you have to sell the raw material cost. Uh, once you identify the bill of material, there comes the raw material cost. And then we have to understand what process it is. So you can say if it is a sheet metal component or if it is a plastic component. You, so we have to understand the material. And then from the material, you understand what process it follows, right? Then, then it comes the processing cost. And then after the processing cost, you have uh, profits, you have overheads, uh, you have... Uh, in inventory carrying cost, packaging, shipping cost. So that is how you break down the overall cost for a product, right? Yeah. So now in the process cost, again, there's a lot of things, right? So if you want to go to the detail, then you, you have to say the process cost is calculated based on the machine hour rate, right? So, so machine hour rate, how it is calculated, it's basically again calculated based on the machine cost. So for example, the cost of a machine is $1,000. So usually there is an industry standard depreciation that happens, right? If it is a depreciated five years or 10 years. So based on that, uh, what is the depreciation cost? What is the yearly maintenance cost for that machine? And then you have uh, yearly cost comes for that machine. So for example, $1,000 machine is depreciated for 10 years. So the machine capital cost is $100. And then say 10% is the maintenance cost every year. So $10. So $110 is the cost for using that machine for one year. And what is the total number of hours that is uh, being used? Is how many hours the industry operates into number of days in a year, right? So then if you divide that, you will get the machine hour rate. So based on the machine hour rate and the cycle time for the process, you get the process cost. So, so you have to understand, right? If you have that understanding itself, I think the hiring manager will understand, oh, this guy is very suitable for this. I, I'm just wanted to give an example, right? So for example, if you are uh, applying for a demand planning or material planning job, you might get in question like, what is the first thing that, uh, how do you do the forecasting? How do you do your forecasting for a product? Forecasting is always wrong, right? But you have to have an answer for like, okay, I'll study the historical data, right? Uh, what, that is one thing. What, is, what, what has been the demand in the past? What is the uh, error uh, in the past? Like suppose say forecast in the past, you guys had like 100 for a year and out of that there was 90. And then what is the future demand? So so you, you plan things, right? Then there's a lot of softwares that you guys, I think nowadays people use. But at least if you show that you have a basic understanding uh, of uh, a process, I think that gives an hiring manager a basic idea. Uh, and then supplier industrialization is mostly uh, focused on uh, SQ, uh, SQE and uh, vendor management jobs. So you have to know like what is CPE, CPK, you should 
know what is the manufacturing process. You should know the control charts, right? And I think some of you guys might be involved in the uh, Six Sigma courses. It's uh, so. If you are interested, uh, you can take that Six Sigma uh, class. It's, it basically gives you an understanding what is a control chart, what is CP, what is CPK, uh, what is the upper control limit, lower control limit, how do you calculate those things. So those are the things that you need to have a manufacturing knowledge uh, and some basic idea about uh, tolerances and all for supplier industrialization roles, right? I don't have a detailed... Uh, other things what they might ask if you want i can talk about the procurement but uh, basically the, these are some of the technical questions i think you can go through and you know uh, prepare yourselves uh, at least for the basic questions the other thing is target uh, the industries that you are looking for right i mean consumer electronics automotive the grocery chain is there walmart target uh, whole foods pharmaceutical in industries heavy industrial energy so look into what you want to uh, fit into yourself and which go career you want to pursue uh, going ahead. Any questions uh, guys have? I spoke a lot. Let me stop here uh, and answer some of the questions. Uh, so how's like the, uh, the initial interview and the technical ra round interviews like differences like how what's what what is like difference between those two kinds of interviews yeah so so basically what i have faced uh, i gave like three four interviews uh, right so initially you speak to a recruiter right so the recruiter's main uh, goal is to understand uh, do you need any sponsorship or not right uh, do you need a, a visa or not so they, they just want to understand those initial things uh, and then uh, after that, you get a first screening round of interview, right? So in that screening or the first round, mm -hmm. that's how usually I think uh, most of the companies here do. They want to understand whatever you have in your resume. Does it really make sense or not, right? So they will just ask you, introduce yourself, uh, tell me about a situation uh, where uh, you had a conflict with a team and then how did you resolve that? Uh, tell me uh, a situation where you negotiated not have to happen to be in an experience but in your life itself like a experience of a negotiation so basic behavioral kind of and then i think after that you will have another round where they will go into more technical uh, uh, kind of questions along with some behavioral so usually like there's like three rounds of interviews uh, that i have seen But for internship, I think uh, it's not that intense, right? If you are looking for an internship, I think usually they have like one or two round uh, and they just want to see uh, how uh, you are, you know, <clears throat> motivated to learn and uh, understand things. Uh, and Prayash, how long should be the uh, duration for self-introduction? So uh, should we keep it below 45 seconds or 30 seconds? Yeah, so basically the first interview, it's total of half an hour, right? So your first interview is 30 minutes, you have a, a time slot. And then uh, the hiring manager is uh, about to ask you maybe three or four questions. So uh, I think if you keep your introduction like 40 to 50 seconds, just say like, okay, your name, uh, your background, right? And then uh, your past experience, if you can quickly talk about uh, so in the past, I worked with Tesla and, and Tesla, like my major uh, project was localization of a particular part where I was able to complete the localization and save so and so dollar money. And then right now I'm working with Meta platforms. I'm looking after the procurement of optics and this components where I'm managing this, this uh, parts. Uh, so I think that would be uh, crisp and brief enough. But touch upon the, you know, just don't say I'm working here, I'm working there. Touch upon the main uh, work and projects that you are uh, doing or you have done there. Yes, yes, Paris. thanks. Hey, Jimmy. Hi. So I have a question as regards um, applying for internship. When do you think, um, when when is the appropriate time for you to start applying? Because I know sometimes it takes a long time before you get a response from them, but I know the earlier you apply, the better, right? 
So when do you think is like the appropriate time to start applying for internship? I think at least three to four months before you need to start applying because first month you might not even get a call. Second month you start getting a call and then third month you start interviewing and it takes a month for you to complete the interview, right? So uh, be proactive and start applying at least three to four months before. Uh, and uh, do not get disheartened if you apply for like two, three positions and you don't get a call. It has happened to every one of us, right? Uh, so keep applying and uh, make sure that the whatever you are applying is uh, based on your background and experience. Otherwise, you will keep on getting the rejection. Yeah, Praful, go ahead. Oh, yeah. Uh, how important are the cover letters? And do you have any advice for us, like what to write in cover letters? Yeah, so cover letters uh, might be important, right? Uh, but I, honestly, I haven't attached cover letters on any, you know, or wherever I have applied, right? So cover letters is basically the same thing uh, on your resume, what you have written. Uh, you will uh, write it like you in, in more detailed way, right? So... Mm -hmm. In, in your previous projects and work experience, uh, if you have some impact impactful projects, you highlight in that uh, why you are for fit for that job, right? So for example, if you are applying for, uh, for Tesla for a sourcing manager, you say, uh, I have worked in past with uh, General Automotive, General, uh, General Motors, where I was managing, uh, 10 vendors uh, and five different SKUs with a uh, procurement value of 500 or 600K. Uh, over there, I was able to successfully negotiate a cost of 1% of my overall buying value. Uh, and uh, currently I am working with so-and-so. -so. so basically, I think it's just a highlight of what you have done and where you have worked. Uh, you can prepare one cover letter uh, and then edit that similar to different work experience, right? You don't need to have like a different cover letter for every different role. Uh, yeah. You can create a, a template for a cover letter and then maybe uh, modify and edit it uh, based on the uh, job requirements and the job profile uh, for different roles. Okay, thank you. Okay. Uh, Maybe I want to ask you guys, right? What, what, what all you are looking for? Like, are you all looking for a supply chain positions, or also operation research, or what's your interest? And uh, how are you guys approaching it? And where you are finding the difficulty? And um, yeah, maybe I can hear from you guys. Anyone? Someone? I know you. You are about to graduate, right? So maybe if you want to share uh, something. Oh yeah. So what I uh, uh, want to say and want to hear from you that is, uh, as we uh, when we uh, look for a job, we apply for different job position. Yeah. And uh, in our LinkedIn, we also provide uh, our previous experiences. But when we apply for different job positions, so like at the same time, there are supply chain or the planning position. So how can we write all those uh, information in our LinkedIn at a time? I think that you can add in that skills, right? The, in the LinkedIn, there is a uh, skills, uh, you can add that. But uh, what I would suggest is uh, if whatever you are writing in your resume uh, or LinkedIn, I think LinkedIn you can write, uh, but in, in your resume, if you are writing something which you haven't done, maybe it might affect you during your interview time. So just like be sure that you prepare those things, right? If you are writing that material planning and you have never done a material planning, you might not be able to answer some of the questions related to that. Okay, right? I, so I know your experiences in textile, right? So I think... If you can, if you start applying for major of the textile industries or companies like Nike or something, I think it would increase your chance of getting a call. Uh, then you apply for consumer electronics, right? Definitely you can get a call for entry-level jobs, right? 
on different industries as well but sometimes you might uh, not like it once you start it yes actually my my question was actually like uh, if i am applying for supply chain analyst position and also for optimization position and in my linkedin if i am uh like there are uh like in for optimization uh, application i have focused on more optimization things and for supply chain or procurement applications i have i have shown them more information about them so if i accumulate all those information in linkedin in my job description that's fine you you are saying that okay i understand and yeah. one more thing some of the companies they ask for expected salary that we don't know um, i think it's better to say negotiable right though I, I i feel like there is no need to give an upfront oh i am expecting 100k or something you can always say i'm open to negotiate you can leave it as a gray area actually sometimes they ask the answer they want the uh, digit answer so there's so for that what you can do is you can go to sites like glassdoor indeed uh, and other sites right and for that company and that particular position it gives you like what is the median or uh, salary range so you can say something if it is like say in midwest and for an entry level i know it's somewhere around 70 to 80k so you can say but i i think you can try to avoid that uh, digit number uh if wherever you can and say you are open to negotiate right yes okay, uh, thank you yeah and and supply chain analyst uh, when you said right supply chain analyst is a very broad uh job description right so make sure you understand because uh, in supply chain analyst if you are not interested in doing the python codes and they want you to do the python codes right you might you know after a month or two you say like oh i don't want to do this right so uh i mean if you are comfortable with python tableau uh you know sql if you have a very good understanding and hands on it go for anything right but if you are not a good data analyst or if you don't have a good hands on on the data thing and you are more uh you know um, then be careful when you uh, look for the jobs Yeah, thank you, Prash. Yeah. And I think uh, you guys should also start working uh, good on Python and all if you are interested for supply chain analyst positions, right? Nowadays, almost every company uh, use Python, SQL uh, for their planning and other purpose. So uh, use your time at OSU right now and uh, hone your skills on all those things. Tableau, you have a certification on Tableau. Uh, you, a supply chain guru i think there is a certification on that so whatever you can learn uh, be 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 prepared to you know uh, face uh, the challenges ahead okay so that was it uh, if you guys have any particular questions uh, feel free to reach out to me uh, i can be more uh, you know uh, i can answer more questions related to procurement and supply chain anything related to vendor management planning right uh, what what all things uh, should be focused on how do you uh, you know uh, after you like start how do you approach uh, things so this is the first thing right i mean i was also at this place i was also worried on getting the interview and jobs and uh, you know and internships and it can be frustrating for a while but good thing about osu is a lot of you uh, might not have a financial pressure, right? Uh, I mean, you guys, some of you might already have some kind of assistance. So you don't have that financial pressure uh, and don't worry much about it. And also the other thing is you can start the volunteering once you graduate, right? So if you graduate, you, you can do a volunteering for a month or two and continue searching on a job. So uh, at least for the first year uh, when you are in OPT, it gives you flexibility uh, for your visa. So make sure you reach out to your professors uh, and uh, ahead and ask them that you want to do a volunteering with them under them. 
and that that helps you give some more time and for intensives for uh, the guys who are uh, you know uh, graduating maybe after one year i think start applying for intensives this will uh, help you better chance for your future job search Okay, if you guys don't have any questions, then maybe we can call it a day. Uh, wish you all the luck uh, and feel free to reach out to me. I'm still using the OSC email ID. So you can just search Prayas in the search bar and uh, I think there is not much Prayas. So <laughs> just feel free to send me an email uh, and uh, I'd be happy to help you guys. Thank you so much, Prayash, for taking your time out for this yeah, seminar. No yeah. Thank you. Bye.